Hello everybody, my name is Rachel. Welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I want to do a quick review of a novella by Elizabeth Hand called Wilding Hall. This is a story about British folk revival music bands and slightly creepy, uncanny, otherworldly experiences in the English countryside. It is written in a documentary format where the members of a former British folk music band called Windhollow Fair have come together decades later to talk about the experience they had in creating their famous album called Wilding Hall and the summer that they spent at the actual Wilding Hall where their like lead singer disappeared. This isn't a spoiler, you know right away from the cast page at the beginning of the book that Julian Barnes is disappeared and presumed deceased. But what really happened that summer at this ramshackle mansion in the English countryside? I think there are actually like two stories in this. The main focus of the novella is on the events of this strange and beautiful summer in the 1970s and the disappearance of Julian. But there's also this second story where the band members have come together in the modern era decades later and are for the first time ever talking about some of the individual weird experiences they had and putting some of those puzzle pieces together to form this more complete picture of what it was really like to be at Wilding Hall and what really might have happened to Julian. Every aspect of this worked for me. I thought the writing was perfect. Hand knows how much to tell you. There's no over-explaining here, and I think that the story and the subject matter, the what it builds up to at the end, works so well because it's not over-explained. The reader really has to do some of the intellectual exercise of realizing what things mean and deciding for yourself whether you think that that literally happened or maybe not. One of the interesting things about this story is that the characters were like 17 to 20 years old at the time of the events, and they were high as kites on drugs and drunk as skunks for most of this summer. Do you believe that these things actually happened to them, or do you not believe them because it might have all been a drug-fueled hallucination? You, you get to decide. But you get to decide because Hand doesn't spoon-feed all the explanations to you. She knows how much to tell, how much to imply, and where to just stop and let you fill in the rest. I also think that Wilding Hall as the setting is this perfect atmospheric place. It really works with the music and the lyrics being talked about in the story, and it's beautiful and historical, but also creepy and run down and possibly haunted. You could really see why these musicians created such a, a masterpiece, basically, while living there at the same time that very weird things were happening. And then you have all this music that it's set during kind of like the second wave of the British folk music revival, which I had never heard the term for that, but I was familiar with the concept. Um, and so it kind of like takes place in the 50s, 60s, 70s, where a lot of musicians were mining the older traditions of, of British music and ballads and poems and lyrics and stuff, taking this very, very old material and creating new modern music with it. I wasn't actually familiar with any of the, the real musicians and bands of this time period that are mentioned in the story, but I could get a real sense of what that must have been like. I mean, I grew up on like the steady diet of Lorena McKennett, Clannad, Doogie McLean, and like their albums from the 70s and 80s, which I think are coming out of a similar tradition. So I had a little bit of a sense of what the music was like, but if you read this and you have no idea what they're talking about, you can actually Google a lot of the poems and the songs that they mention and find other people's performances of it and get a sense of what they're actually talking about. I could talk about this for a long time, but I will cut myself off there because I don't want to spoil what is quite a short story. I would definitely recommend this, especially if you want something seasonally appropriate for the spooky October time, but you don't want something outright scary. This is kind of slightly gentle horror, I would say. 
So yes, um, definitely let me know if you have read this, if you enjoyed it. Um, if you're looking for more things along the lines of this novella, I would also throw in a mention of Elizabeth Hand's novella Near Zanor, which I think is very similar in feel and a little bit along the same topic. And that is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you again soon, and until then, bye.